It's the Hero Show. Welcome to the Hero Show, everybody, where each week we seek inspiration from great men and women to become the heroes and heroines of our own lives. And you are here with your hosts. I am Andrew Bernstein. You are Robert Begley. How are you doing today, Robert? I am unbelievable, Andy. Today, uh, they have this ex expression in fitness, no pain, no gain. Well, I think our theme will be no pain, no USA, because we're going to celebrate <laughs> the free thinker who wrote with common sense during the age of reason about the rights of man. And uh, what a writer, what a human being. I'm excited. Yes. Yeah, I know. I, I hear you, Rob. But Thomas Paine was most definitely not a sun, sunshine patriot or a or a summer yeah. soldier, he stood up for, for liberty his entire life against, yes. uh, the, you know, the French, the British, the, you know, in many cases, the Americans hated him, but yes. he, you know, he stood, he stood, and when he died, he should have been celebrated as a national hero. There were like six people at his funeral. Uh, yeah. so, what and, a life. Was, the man did yeah. not, he, he didn't live in peace or die in peace. And we'll, we'll certainly get to that. Uh, Andy, but some some themes I'd like to discuss today. One is, uh, as a writer, he wrote for the common man. I mean, his most famous uh, work was called Common Sense. And how is that effective as opposed to those who write for more erudite, you know, scholarly public? Uh, that's one thing. Secondly, summer soldier versus the winter soldier. You know, how what distinguishes courage from cowardice? Payne writes a lot about that and how could we apply this in our life? And then on the negative side, he was a staunch individualist writing a lot about individual rights, but he also advocated a welfare state. And we'll try to uh, unpack uh, that element as well. Uh, and then anything else, he's got so many quotes, Andy, we'll, we'll dig the, you know, <laughs> we'll unpack some of his oh, many yeah. uh, wall of quotes. Uh, that are just steeped in the in the English, you know, in the English language, as, as you said, you know, these are yeah, these are the times that try men's souls. I, it's ooh, I get goosebumps. These are the yeah, that's that's from the American crisis, right? Yes, um, yes. But my, you know, mm -hmm. they, uh, yeah, he has so many brilliant quotes. My all-time favorite is "My own mind is my own church." I, I mean, talk uh, about you know, yes. the, you know the you know the sacredness of the of the human mind. And Payne captured yes. that in one brilliant sentence. You know, he yes. is yeah, he is a great mm -hmm. writer. You know, sometimes you think of we could think of George Washington as the sword of the American Revolution, Thomas Jefferson, perhaps mm -hmm. the mind of the American Revolution. Thomas Payne is definitely the pen of the American yes. Revolution. His, I agree. His, I, yeah. I agree. The pen is mightier uh, than the sword, Andy. He's the one that actually, you know, we're, as as we talk about his impact, you know, in America, particularly 1776, uh, what the man did in that year, from January through December, it's it, we could we could say nobody else did that. Uh, but let's just um, let's talk about a little bit about his uh, his background because he was a late bloomer. You know, he yeah. he <laughs> he. If you read his story, I mean, it's just all this data he gets, all this failure. You know, he was in business, it failed. One first marriage, his wife dies giving childbirth. Second marriage, he ends up uh, as a failure. He's got no money. Fortunately, bumps yeah, into he was Benjamin fired. Franklin. He was fired from his government <laughs> jobs in, in Britain. <laughs> exactly. Right. Tax, tax collecting, developing corsets. So it's like... What a heroic story, Andy. Let's throw everything at the kitchen sink at this guy and have him fail and then send ship him off to America where he catches typhoid and has to be quarantined oh, yeah. for like six weeks on top of that, you know? And then That's right. how about this about for that. to make a to, how about this to make a living? Why don't you become an editor and writer? And oh, by the way, the best selling writer uh practically of the of the entire 18th century. So that's like the arc of this man, and this is at age 37. Okay, it's not like he right. was an early, you know, he wasn't a Mozart here where, where he's just dashing off these, these great uh, tomes. Uh, so he had a lot of right. experience in failure, Andy. Um, 
that helped him uh, as a thinker and as a writer. Go ahead. I know yep. I mean, it's a good point, Robert. So, I mean, his dates were 1737 to 1809, born yeah. in England, uh, where, where he, like you said, he failed it pretty much everything, almost died, yeah. like you said, on the trip to, oh, he met, he met Benjamin Franklin when, when he was still in England, right? Which was, yes. a, I think, a, a pivotal moment in Payne's life. Absolutely. Franklin must, yes. Franklin must have recognized uh, something in the, in, you know, 30 something year old uh, Thomas Payne. Mm -hmm. So this was what, it was that 1760 something when he meets Franklin? I don't know. Uh, when he met in the late 1760s, but 1774 is when he actually comes over All to right. America. So, so there were, Franklin, I'm just, I'm just doing the arithmetic in my head. Franklin was born in 1706. So by 1774, he's Franklin 68. Um, Payne's 37. Right. But Franklin, yeah. Franklin was an astute person. I mean, he was in, he was a genius. He must have seen something in the in Thomas Paine. And he sponsored he sponsored Paine to come yes. to Philadelphia. You, you're right. He almost died from typh was a typhoid on the on the yeah. journey over. And um, so, yeah. And one thing we should we, we'll get to before the end of the show, we, we could throw at Paine is uh, many of his fellow revolutionaries by the time of his, you know, in the end of his life had. Were, had repudiated him or criticized him, yeah. perhaps because mm -hmm. of his, you know, his uh, the quote I said before. He 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 was a he was a, a pain was a, a theist, believed in God. He was a monotheist, many clearly believed in one God. He was a Quaker sort of, but yet he had a yes. stinging rebuke of of organized religion. I mean, what do you say? I don't believe. I, yeah. I reject the Jewish creed, the Roman creed, the Turkish Bible. creed, the Protestant mm -hmm. creed. That's that that covers Judaism, Catholicism, Islam, and Protestantism right there. Yeah, and he just ripped the Bible as a bloody, call you know, a bloody book filled with you know filled with terrible violence and everything. So since when he died, Second Great Awakening, you know, religiosity spread across the country. That must have contributed to Paine's unpopularity. You know, at the time of his death, only six people is giant of the American Revolution in 1809. Yeah. Many people had lived mm -hmm. through the American Revolution, were still alive in 1809, and six people at Payne's mm -hmm. funeral. That's that's horrific. So yeah, everything, every, yeah. everything. What, what did John Adams, the great John Adams? You know, I, I say that sincerely. Adams was, uh, you know, a great. Oh, he's great to the American. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he was another genius. Adams called the common sense a crapulous mass. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know what the word crapulous meant, Rob. I had to look it up this morning. It doesn't and, mean and, crap? And, no, it doesn't. It means, you know, it means beset by too much drinking and eating, you know, and everything. <laughs> I, so was was Adams claiming that pain was a was a heavy drinker and a, or, 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 or there is that rumor out there about pain that he, he you know just like uh grant you know a, gen, a couple of generations later u.s grant that you know if they if they drink a little bit now all of a sudden they're a drunkard in that era andy people drank a lot and and yeah, often we, most we of should, the he, most heated debates took place like in taverns and pubs and that was yeah, we should, a way to get we should point out robert that you couldn't drink the water back then. That's right. There it was, was safer. No, there was no yeah. way. To, there was no way to purify. Purification. It, you know, the, mm -hmm. Yeah, there was no way to keep human and animal, you know, waste products out of the drinking water. So cholera and all these other, typhoid, typhus, those were the, uh, the dysentery. I think that, I could be wrong on some of yeah. the medical issues, but there was a lot of diseases that are spread by drinking impure drinking water. And so, in the 19th century, yeah. the United States was known as the Alcohol Republic. Because it was yeah. so much, you had, Amazing, you, had yeah. you know, the, you drank so much, so much alcohol because you, you had, you had to boil the water before you could drink it, which is, you know, was was a pain. You can't just go to the tap and get water. So yeah, uh, there was a lot of drinking. I don't know if pain drank to excess, but his writing certainly does. I mean, Adams is wrong if he's claiming that Payne's writing sounds like the product of a drunken mind. That's just absolutely false. Yeah, you know, Payne is a yeah. really so writer. A brilliant writer, and again, we'll we'll say some more quotes from him to to set that context. But 1775, so he's in he's in Philadelphia, and he hooks up with a a newspaper publisher of the Pennsylvania, and he starts working for him, and he starts and in short order he becomes the editor of this publication, and takes to the pen. Uh, in a way that he had not done before. So it's, it's as, as we said, just all of this experience 
uh, and, and failure and observations of monarchy um, and tyranny over the individual, he's ready to write about it. And the first thing that puts him on the map, 1775, is he writes about emancipating the blacks uh, and slavery. And this was not very common in 1775. I mean, we really need to understand anywhere in the world this was not common. But in Philadelphia, uh, you know, with the United States where slavery is is uh, a, a big part of uh, the, the colonies, Paine is already writing, he's not afraid to ruffle feathers. I mean, there's a, there's an expression, <laughs> our friend uh, Jim Valiant uh, told me once, he, he never crossed the bridge that he didn't burn. Okay, that's I think that's a good <laughs> way of, of looking and, at Thomas Paine. And, and he was a bridge builder too, you know, ironically. He was great. Yeah, on top of that, you're right. Yeah, right. You're totally right. So his first thing is lighting a fire on the emancipation, and this puts him on the map. But then we get to, and he's friends with Benjamin Rush, who is the leading physician at the time, a fellow Philadelphian. And Rush conceives of this idea about writing uh, something for the American public, uh, something against the monarchy. But, but Rush is not ready for that. He's, he fears, he has a business. He has clients. Many are Tories. A Tory is someone who lives in the colonies and supports the king and wants, mm -hmm. just wants, uh, to remain as loyal British sub subjects. So Payne uh, takes over this project and his original, his original title was Plain Truth, uh, but Rush said, no, let's call it Common Sense. <clears throat> and it's published anonymously, January 10th, uh, 1776. And it catches on like wildfire, Andy. It's a, it, the equivalent today would be like 90 million copies sold. Okay, uh, th this is like off the charts. Uh, he publishes it anonymously, and because he believes in the American cause, he doesn't even want any royalties from it. He wants that money going to the war is in earnest, you know, and, and he wants it going to the troops to support the war effort. And I think these are just, you know, in, in, in incredibly noble uh, motives uh, yeah. for Thomas Paine at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And let's, and let, let's point out a few things here. So January 1776. The War of Independence is already underway, right? The the Minutemen had fired the shot heard around the world in April yes. of 1775. So, uh, yep. so all, already at, at war, uh, you know, with with Great Britain. A another point. So, so in the beginning of the uh, of the war, another point I want I want to make here is that what what you said the equivalent of selling 90 million copies today. So the the free population of the colonies back then was something like two million, and and the books sold yeah. hundreds of thousands, pamphlets sold hundreds of yeah. thousands of copies. Yeah. Something I want mm -hmm. to point out here is the high literacy levels of America yes. back then. Yes. Because although common sense is written in a very plain style, it's written for the intelligent layman. He's not using all these highfalutin words like you pointed out. Nevertheless, it's articulating serious political themes. And you know this this is being widely read. Uh, it's it's just one it's one proxy datum showing. I, I, this is in my mind because I just you know, wrote the book on education. Uh, you know yeah. how, how much how much higher literacy levels were in in the American colonies in, in the 1770s than than today. If we gave common sense to a lot of college graduates, I, I know since I teach these college kids, well, good kids, a lot of them mm -hmm. would struggle. Uh, with, with with common sense, but anyhow, uh, so so pain is you know is is speaking to the patriotism, you know of uh, the American people here that you know shall what's the line shall, shall an island rule a continent? Um, yeah, that's, that's shall an island is. across the sea across an entire ocean on top of it. You know, it's one thing if the island is like you know Puerto Rico or Cuba, but it's <laughs> you know it's all the way across a, a, an entire ocean. And Payne brings, he has these expressions, again, that the common man can, can understand. Uh, he has these allusions to what a monarchy is like. So the two revolutionary things, because in the, in, the, uh, in the back of the book, that, even the subtitle is a, The Call to Independence. And this is the first time this is published, you know, this is publicly written. You know, we need we need independence. Okay. And this is what, this is what the, the Declaration of Independence has not yet been written. OK, mm -hmm. so there's a skirmish right now going on between the colonies and the British Empire. But Payne is he's blunt 
and he's blunt with his criticism of the monarchy. And the other thing, Andy, is at, th at this time, the, the complaints were more against the British Parliament. Okay, it was not directed towards the king. This is another first because if they knew who Payne was, you know, he'd definitely be tried, you know, for treason and hung. But uh, so he's saying new things here in a new way, giving these uh, in plain English, so that the layman, uh, the common man, the common intelligent uh, man and woman, for that matter, uh, can understand what he's writing about. And uh, just one, you know, one. Uh, by the, quick by the way, Robert, said, that's why that's yeah, why I don't like the term common man, because very often the common man can, you know, be uncommon and can rise to the heights of greatness and heroism. I prefer the term every man, you know, every man, every woman, okay. the, intel the intelligent layman. I think, it, you know, I, yes. I think it's uh, I think it's, I prefer common, the intelligent layman myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, an intelligent you're, layman. You're yeah, right. Common is a little bit disparity. But anyway, yeah, he's he's writing for, for every man and every woman. Um, and and he's he's so eloquent. Uh, he's, 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 but anyway, yeah. you were you were gonna quote you were gonna quote Payne. Yeah, it's just the cause of America is the cause of mankind. You know, this is what he's saying. So he's in America. He's lived in uh, Britain and more broadly Europe for his entire life, and he's making the case that America is not a British. You know, it's it's a European. It's it was birthed out of Europe, not out of just Britain. Okay, and me as a lifelong New Yorker, uh, no, knew, always knew the Dutch impact. Okay, right. so the Dutch had a big, and and other cultures uh, had an impact on America. Even though in the 1760s, 1750s, they were all loyal British subjects. And Payne is looking at a more global view, and uh, and just with the title, he says, "Common sense will tell us that the power that hath endeavored to subdue us is." of all others, the most improper to defend us. Okay. So, you know, the ones who it's, it's kind of like that thing, you know, you have this, remember we had Teddy Roosevelt and there's this big military there telling this poor, you know, South American country, we're here to protect you. <laughs> you know, And right, it's right. like, that's what the British were saying to America. You know, we're here where there's armed soldiers everywhere, you know, quartering in people's homes and, and Payne is calling all that out. He's, he's definitely calling all that out. And uh, as we said, common sense, it just takes off like wildfire. They're wondering, the public's wondering, who wrote, who wrote this? Was it John Adams? Was it Benjamin Franklin? Because there weren't that many, you know, known uh, uh, writers at the time. And certainly it was a new style. Um, mm -hmm. And it was some time until Payne, I think the first publication sold out like immediately. And the second one, it said written by an Englishman. Mm -hmm. It just he gave he gave a more general uh, uh, description of the author, <clears throat> and then uh, again this emboldens the American cause. So now the man on the street, the woman on the street, can see that there's something worth fighting for. All of this is foreshadowing July Fourth Declaration of Independence and, and the the voting for the call for independence. Right, and uh, and at that time, Thomas Jefferson was was also a young man and was not not widely recognized yet as a brilliant writer. Now That's there right. there is mm -hmm. there there are some rumors that that Payne was involved in the in the writing of the yes. Declaration. That, that I don't know. I don't know if any yeah. if historians. Can, there is some uh, evidence for it. that. So the, so I I, I got to admit. I, so I've been a Payne fan for decades. Since I'm a kid, I've heard this story about the bones of Thomas Paine. <laughs> we'll get into that. And oh, yeah, I worked in my yeah. job <laughs> yeah. uh, at Merrill Lynch. I worked in, in, the, in Greenwich Village, which is the place where Paine died. And there's a plaque uh, for him uh, on that street. And then also in New Rochelle, not far from, from where you lived, uh, Andy, there's, there's a museum for Thomas Paine. And the, in that museum, they make this case that one of the drafts on the back of one of the, one of the drafts of the declaration is there's a TP uh, initials, which is saying that he did have some, uh, you know, some impact. And it totally makes sense, Andy, yeah, because here's a man who's a brilliant writer. Why would he not be a writer? And, and the declaration is for in, the- in Phil And the in Philadelphia, right? He's in way more known than Jefferson is yeah. at the time. You know, if you, if you just freeze the uh, time, 
people don't know Jefferson nearly as well as they know Thomas Paine, even just as a writer, you know? And, right. and so I think there was some evidence for that. And Paine and, also a firebrand for liberty. So that, you know, it, yes. it, it adds up, you know, it, yeah. it adds up. It makes yeah. sense. It's, it's it com- adds up completely. Sense. So if we, if we just progress through the year 1776, the declaration is giving this moral case now for independence, but, America's, you know, Washington's ducking and running. He's and Payne puts down his pen and picks up the sword and actually joins uh, the army. He serves under uh, Nathaniel Green, and he's there when Washington has to abandon New York and Brooklyn and is running in in New Jersey. And then finally, as we get to the winter of 1776. He realizes that, yeah, now the time is right for something else. We need another boost because by the end of the year, so many of the soldiers who had uh, put, you know, put in for their service, they're, they're, they're done. Their time is up December 31st and they're not coming back. They're starving. They have, you know, they're, they're losing everything. And, and so Payne has to come up with this, uh, with this manifesto to get, you know, t- t- for the cause again, and that's the American crisis, and, right? Which, uh, which possibly which opens the mem- with, most. Go ahead. Which opens with these are the yeah. times that try men's souls, right? The summer, the summer <laughs> soldier, the sunshine patriot will melt. I forget yeah. the wording, but it's brilliant. Do you have to have the wording in front of you? Uh, uh, I sh- I should. Yeah, these. Uh, yeah, these well, if, if you don't, I mean that's okay. But these are the times that try men's soul. What a great. That, that's the opening line. Of American that's crisis. the opening really? line yeah and then he brilliant. continues on andy which is a theme song for one's life the harder the conflict the more glorious the triumph you know you and i right. can say this every day we wake up okay there's an entire conflict that we are dealing with in, in these times today that try not men's everyone's souls you know we're definitely living in this era where we need a thomas Paine uh to stand up and and advocate for for uh these ideas uh, December 19th, this is, okay, that it's that American Crisis is published. George Washington reads it, reads it to his troops. Less than a week later, he crosses the Delaware, the first big victory during uh, the American, the Revolutionary War, and Thomas Paine is there. You know, he it's, it's his words that are giving that emotional jolt uh, to the troops. Um, and then it's only a matter of time now that France gets involved. Uh, Payne eventually goes to France and actually uh, secures some some uh, financing from the French uh, for the American cause, and and eventually, you know, 1781, the, uh, the yeah, that, war is won. That, should, that shouldn't be overlooked. Yeah. We should, you know, we should stay on that for a minute. Payne actually yes. went to France, negotiated with the French, and yes. succeeded in getting money, you know, from from France to to bolster the American cause. That's no small thing. You know, no, given, given how, no. how so he's a man of action. The, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, novelist philosopher Ayn Rand says the founding fathers weren't they weren't just thinkers. They were they were thinkers who were men of action. And Thomas Paine absolutely, uh, you know, uh, fits into that description because he, he, you know, as a brilliant writer, of course, his his thinking was was uh, incredibly advanced. But the fact that, as we said earlier, he could write for uh, the the intelligent layman or the common man. Is yeah. something that yeah. yes yeah let's let's stay with the american crisis for just a minute because yeah. his, mm-hmm. his his you know the way he can turn a phrase and 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 coin the way he can coin terms you know the summer soldier the sunshine patriot you know the uh you know it, it the you know the the imagery is brilliant that you know in the nice weather you know it's warm you're not freezing your little butt off it's you know it's the sun is shining you, it's it's much easier to stand up for liberty and you know and, and fight in the good times uh but it's winter and you're freezing this is the 18th century by the way let me bring in some climate history here that was the, during what they call the little ice age when the earth was colder it was colder than it is today in the modern warm period and the winters were brutal we we, we know what kind of winter Washington and the Continental Army suffered through at Valley Forge. So, you know, the, the yeah. winters are, you know, were, were cold and long and 
icy and, and everything. And, mm -hmm. and, you, and you, like you said, Robert, the British are beating your butt. They're chasing Washington's army across the, you know, New York and New, and New Jersey uh, and, and into Pennsylvania. And, um, you know, this now it's tough. Now it's really hard. Now it's time for yeah. somebody who's not a summer soldier. Now it's time for the winter. Yeah. The winter soldier, you know, not only cold, yeah. you know, literally, but you're losing, you're bleeding, you're, you know, you're being beaten and morale is low. Now is the time to really be a tough guy in support of liberty. And, you know, and Thomas Paine rallying the troops, you know, raising them, raising the morale. Yeah. Even his even his imagery is uh, is just stunning. You know, this, I, I love yeah, the I sunshine. Found, I found, and the, you know, I found it. Uh, I have the whole, his whole uh, uh, volume in Kindle. So these are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of his country. But he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Okay, here's the courage versus cowardice. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. Yet oh, wait, well, hold on, hold on, stop, stop. What a line. What, yes. What a line that is. <laughs> Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. Oh, my God. <laughs> Brilliant. Yet we have this consolation, consolation with us that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. What we obtain too cheaply, we esteem too lightly. In other words, what we, when you're given something for free and you don't work for it, you don't esteem it nearly as highly as when you actually go out and fight for something. <clears throat> and uh, he says, "'Tis dearness only that gives everything its value." And he just goes on. This is this is the opening of the American crisis. But Andy, I just want to. Um, so that's number one. Number two, I want to talk about the egoism. This man had an ego, you know. I think prop, properly so. But in in uh, American crisis number two, a couple couple of weeks later, he says, "You may issue your proclamations and welcome, uh, for we have learned to reverence ourselves." That's in parentheses and and uh, italics and scorn the insulting ruffians that employ you. Okay, so he's, he's like, reverence ourselves. You know, we've seen this in, in uh, Nietzsche came, you know, uh, decades later, and then uh, novelist philosopher Ayn Rand in, in her works, uh, this idea of revering yourself as, as an individual, as a human being. All right, this is what Thomas Paine's writing during America's most difficult era. Yep. Uh, well. He, he recognized that, you know, never has the sun shined on a more worthy cause. Uh, yep. I forget if that's from Common Sense or, or American Crisis, but... Um, I, yeah, he wrote I, them in 1776, both, both of them, as we yeah. say. So... It, it, I, I think it's I think it's common sense, but I could be wrong. But uh, you know, it's a great line, never has the sun shined on a worthier cause. You know, abs absolutely true. The cause of human liberty is so, you know, yeah. something that human beings have struggled for going back, you know, throughout, throughout history and still struggling. You think, you think about yeah. it, Robert, it's uh, 2023 now. So what is that? Mm -hmm. 247 years since the Declaration of Independence. If we, if we date 1790, you know, as the start of the American Republic, 233 mm -hmm. years since the establishment of the American Republic and liberty is still virtually unknown around the globe. Yeah. I mean, it's all yeah. over the world. Yeah, you know, whether you go to Russia or China or various, you know, military dictatorships in Burma, mm -hmm. or, you know, every, or, you know, or your know, communism in Venezuela, you know, where, all over the world is there's that relative handful of countries that are relatively free. Uh, it's really yeah. sad, uh, but but this is this is the fight, you know, of of, of human history. The struggle for liberty, you know, and to the escape yes. from tyranny, whether it's the kings or the military dictators or the Nazis or the mm -hmm. communists, or, you know, the theocrats, whoever it is. And Thomas Paine is a shining light in this ages long struggle for, 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 for liberty. And so he's, a, he, yeah. you know, whatever his flaws, and I know we're going to discuss them in a little bit, he's a giant. Yeah. Giants sometimes have yes. flaws. Paine did. Yeah. But he's a giant in this yeah. in this monumental struggle, the struggle of, of human history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he, I would say, Andy, if I was to look at the arc of his life, this is the peak. 
you know, getting America started. And, and in fact, there are statues of him where they call him father of the American Revolution. Okay, that is not, <laughs> those words don't fall light. They're not placed beneath somebody very simply. You know, like they're, they're, somebody's got to have a lot of data if they're going to grant him that title. You know, we, we know properly George Washington is known as the father of the country, but father of the American Revolution is a little bit, that's actually, you know, a little bit different. And as we said, the pen is mightier than the sword. It was Thomas Paine's pen that motivated yeah. George Washington to yeah. take that risk. You know, uh, I, 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 just, I mean, this is our logo. The Hero Show logo is Washington crossing the Delaware. And, yes. right? and, and it's yes. Payne's pen that's actually leading yes. us. I, I mean, it Good just gets, point. like I said, it gives me goosebumps. Good point. We could say the pain is mightier than the sword. Uh, <laughs> but, but regarding, <laughs> <That's good. laughs> regarding fostering the American Revolution and establishing the American Republic, there's a lot of credit to go around. This is a monumental yes. achievement in the cause of, yes. of human liberty. And uh, Payne certainly gets, uh, I think, by any rational, mm -hmm. any any just standard, Payne gets an enormous amount of credit. And why it mm -hmm. sticks in my craw that six people showed up at his funeral uh, in 1809 yeah. When the country, you know, was in its, in its infancy and and celebrating liberty and and and, and loving it, eighteen oh nine was June of eighteen oh nine, was it when he died? So was it James Madison uh, was president? Right, February. Yeah, it was Madison. Madison was president. Yeah, and right. um, so just move. Let's just move on quickly and into the other. Yeah. So one in, one interaction with Ben Franklin it synopsizes what you exactly talking about liberty. So Benjamin Franklin says. Where liberty is, is my country. And Payne says, where liberty is not, is my country. <laughs> in other words, I got to go wherever liberty is not and, and inject it, okay? So after America, he goes back to Britain and he starts writing out against the monarchy and against the secession. That was the other thing. He's like, just because you're born, I mean, how radical is this, Andy? Just because you're born you know, as the first son of a, a king, that automatically makes you better, you know? Like, here, here's the self-made man idea that, yeah, that Payne is right. all about. And he's rejecting this, and the Brits are, like, ready to put him on trial and, and effectively hang him. So he's got to, he's got to flee for his life. Yeah, there. that's he right. Says he's that accused, this is he's accused of libel, libel yeah. and sedition, but, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and he says, put, yeah, call yeah. me a libel, or put it on my grave, you know? <laughs> it's like, that's he right. calls them out. For that goes over to France. They're doing the French Revolution. Um, and this is what he writes, uh, the rights of man. Now, I think uh, similar to Jefferson and others, they got caught up with the, the idea of the French Revolution, but several, and here's where he parts company with the, with the Federalists, uh, uh, Washington, Adams, and uh, Hamilton in particular, where they saw the French Revolution, it's going to turn bloody very quickly. And Paine did not see that. You know, he, he just, he was writing the rights of man, which Napoleon read, kept under his pillow, okay, when, before he was the, the uh, dictator of France. And um, he, he, this catches on like wildfire, the rights of man. But it's more of, uh, it, I consider it, Andy, a mixed, you know, it's, it's not s simply individual rights. This is, when, when you talked earlier about the common man, here's where I, I see a little bit of a flaw with, Pain because he, when does the common man go to what we can effectively call mob rule? Okay, and this right. is exactly what France did. This is exactly the difference between French and American revolutions. The French Revolution descended to mob rule, where the dictators jump in front, and the more federalist American Revolution had a proper leadership and checks and balances in place uh, to 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 uh, have a constitutional republic. Right, right. The American Revolution is a product of the Scottish Enlightenment. It's it's very British, whereas the French Revolution is a product of you know the French Enlightenment, and it's very French. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a lot, mm -hmm. there's a lot more that could be said about this. We don't have the time to discuss it right now, but I do think the American Revolution is the revolution of the Enlightenment period not yes. not the, not the french revolution which is very mixed but that's a whole separate discussion but i know Paine was briefly friendly with napoleon and you're right napoleon was enamored of the rights of man but to mm -hmm. Paine's credit when napoleon turned into a military dictator 
pain dismissal. What do you call them? The like the greatest imposter of of history yeah, or something, something like, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that. But he yeah. pain pain missed being executed by the French by like this much. Uh, he came. Yeah. He, he was on the death sentence during the during, during the, the reign of terror, Robespierre's reign of terror. He's got Thomas Paine earmarked to be executed. And what they would do is they'd have in the jail cells, they would put an X on the door on the outside of the door saying, OK, your head is rolling tomorrow morning. But because Paine had a lot of visitors, his door was open and, and the X man put, <laughs> puts, uh, you know, puts the X on the inside of the door. So he escapes. The, the man just had this time. Yeah, but, but, okay. but the luckiest, the, the, the most fortuitous set of circumstances. And then like the day after, two days later, Robespierre was executed. Or was yeah, condemned, yeah. or they, they yeah. was overthrown, or whatever. And, and, and so what pain, and, pain, and pain what survived. does Payne do while in jail? Okay, he writes the Age of Reason, which is you know the 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 as we mentioned earlier, the attack on the Bible. <clears throat> he makes it clear he does believe in you know a one God, yes. and um, comes back from France to America and lives out his days from the early early eighteen hundreds to eighteen oh nine and um has a place in new rochelle which is what new yorkers call upstate anything north of the bronx <laughs> we call upstate <laughs> and then also down in greenwich village there used to be andy there was a street in lower manhattan called reason street okay because of thomas Paine's the age of reason and <clears throat> this is uh, on grove street which is uh you have bleaker and you have um couple of other streets that that connect and I used to say <laughs> that uh, reason was replaced by bleaker street and when you abandon reason things become bleaker you know and that's a, <laughs> that's a uh, <laughs> it's kind of and in this funny. we have a, if if you look closely you see to the left where under the T of Thomas Paine British Isles under the Paine the E is France and then above his head is the United States of America so his point is where liberty is not, I'm going to bring some, oh. you know, bring as much liberty as possible. And even towards the end of his life, Andy, South America caught on. They caught the pain uh, influence as well because Spain itself was diminishing as as a monarch. And some of, you know, some of the famous um, Spanish uh, rulers started reading pain and, and uh, uh, they became uh, liberated as well. They started to get the pain also. But I, I wanted to, I want to say one thing about about the Age of Reason, which I think is a brilliant book. Yes. Uh, yeah, he does. He yes. professes his 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 religious beliefs. Okay, but uh, he excoriates the Bible as a yeah. What did he, he say? Something like two thirds of it, or three quarters of it, a bloody mess. It's just a disgrace. I don't remember his exact word, but it's a disgraceful book. You know, and, and is the is the upshot here? Uh, advocates he war, says, advocates slavery. Mm -hmm. Those he right. points these things and out. Mm -hmm. Monarchy, monarchy comes from the the, the hated yes. institution. Of monarchy comes from the Bible, and his great line is, "I you know, I don't remember the exact word and everything, but I reject the Jewish Church, I reject the Roman Church, mm -hmm. meaning the Catholics, I reject the Turkish Church, meaning Islam." I reject the Protestant church. Black pretty much covers the waterfront of all the Middle Eastern <laughs> religions that are, you know, that, that are prevalent in the in the Western world. You know, and he says, "My own mind is my own church." What a beautiful yeah. line! You know, that yeah. that the, the independent mind, the independent thinking mind, the reasoning mind is sacred. Um, so, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. pain gets, and I think that's why pain was unpopular to a certain degree. You know, back in the United States. Which had been, yes. you know, has gone through the, our country. Sadly, has gone through periodic religious revivals, and this was around the time of the so-called Second Great Awakening. And the religious yeah. people didn't like Paine. They knew he was, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he, he he was he believed in God, but he wasn't their cup of tea. You know, rejected the Bible, rejected yeah. Christianity. Although he was a Quaker, sort of, right? Did he, did he belong to the Quaker denomination? His, his, yes, his father was a Quaker. His mother was an Anglican. So he had the, the impact on both, and he was more lenient towards the Quakers because capital punishment he was against. So in France, they wanted to kill the king, and he he, he was disagreed. Against, right? That was one of the reasons he 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 wanted his head. he wanted King Louis exiled to the United States. How the perfect United, would that have been? to straighten them know? out? Right? He yeah, said, exactly. "You'll see where real a real demo, you know uh, republic exactly. uh, comes from." You know, exactly. that, that, you know and, that strikes and, me. That is very that is very just. 
rather than chop off yes. the dude's head and, and and his kids and everything, make them go yeah. live in the United States and live in a free country and see if you know. I bet the kids would be influenced by it if if if, uh, if nothing else. That strikes and, me as and a Andy, very there's actually data. Function. There's data for that. I think uh, Janay. Uh, there was a French ambassador who, you know, who publicly uh, condemned uh, Washington, which sadly Thomas Paine did too. And that also yeah, he did. led to oh, his sure unpopula did. unpopularity. But Genet ended, this guy ended up, he was a radical, you know, revolutionary for, for France that he wanted to bring to America. And he lived his late days out in upstate New York uh, as well. You know, like he, he, he saw the value of freedom. So, but this, right. this quote See, here. Sadly. Sadly, Payne denounced Washington. I think Washington was president at the time, right? Because Washington he, was he president. Felt abandoned by, he felt abandoned by Washington. Yeah, he, he, he Payne's in jail in and, and he believed Washington colluded with Robespierre. There, there's no way in a million years <laughs> that a George Washington would collude with a Robespierre. You know, I, I just, I'm well, not, I'm he not just convinced. Didn't do enough. As, as president of the United States, maybe he didn't do enough to, uh, to exert his influence on the French regime to let Thomas Paine go. And maybe that's what Paine was so that's uh, angry about. very possible. Yeah. So the quotes around this, uh, again, we'll take a couple of minutes on some of his awesome quotes. Independence is my happiness. My country is the world. And my religion is to do good. And that's the, those are like the outer frame. You know, my religion is to do good. <laughs> Imagine if every religious person said, my religion is to do good. And, but of course we'd ask, what is the good? You know, is living yeah. for yourself, being productive, well, it's a, you it's, know, it's, honest. It's a start anyway, rather than, you know, my purpose is to kill yeah. the heretics, or, you know, or, you know yeah. conquer, the, conquer yes. the infidels. Yeah. It's a start. Yeah. And one other yeah. quote, Andy, that we, the, you know, one of the most famous, again, when, when, Payne comes to America and he sees the benefit, the, the, the opportunity of the American Revolution. We have it in our power to begin the world again, yeah, over great again. Line. The birth great. of a new world great is line. at hand. Oh. <laughs> you know, the, these things, you know, you wonder who said this, you know, what kind right. of impact can, can a, a person to, to put this into a simple English sentence that Oof. Right. No, that's that's just, that's just very goosebumps. moving. We we yeah, exactly mm -hmm. we have it in our power to begin the world anew, uh, and he's and he's absolutely right. Again, going back to that age old struggle for liberty that goes on, you know, yeah. it's still going on with uh, under endless tyrannies all over the world. This is what's necessary to begin the world anew: is liberty to unleash and Andy, the, the creative mind. Life lesson for today, for people today, particularly the young. He says, those who expect to reap the blessings of liberty must, like men, undergo the fatigues of supporting it. So if you want your Starbucks and you want your iPhones and, and all the Amazon, you know, five minute deliveries, what supports that liberty? Okay, there are ideas <laughs> that support this incredibly advanced lifestyle that you have. Uh, comes from the ideas that Payne advocated two, right. two and a half centuries ago. Right, you're absolutely right. And even for me, I mean, I'm a devout coward, you know. But, but there's times <laughs> you when are even, not. <laughs> but there's times, I, but there's times when even a coward needs to stand up, you know, for for liberty. So uh, you reminded me a lot of times in in my intro to philosophy class, when we're discussing when the political philosophy section, we're discussing the Lockean idea, you know, a very limited government and, you know, that, that the mm -hmm. military should be, you know, should be voluntary, no draft. And very often the kids will ask, well, what happens if, you know, if, uh, if in a free country, nobody volunteers, you know, to defend liberty. And my answer mm -hmm. is always, well, then they're going to lose their liberty and, and justly so. If men and yeah. women are not, that's are not right. willing even to even devout cowards like me if they're not willing to go out and fight for the liberty when it's being attacked then then we're going to lose it and and that's and that's just it's right and proper that we'll lose it in that case yeah but andy let's let me defend you here on camera in the sense that there is a division of labor and as we said the pen is mightier than the sword so you don't just jump oh, yeah. in to battle. And actually one of Payne's main thing, he distinguishes self-defense. He makes a moral distinction between fighting in self-defense, which the Americans were, the colonists were against the British or being the aggressor. Okay. He never advocated being the aggressor 
in in um in war he's more a matter of defending your rights your property your liberty and this is again what distinguishes uh him so andy just yeah, closing and we, out on 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 the, on, the, on the distinction uh with him he advocates a welfare state he advocates yeah, he you know a lot of socialists today claim pain for their own because of this universal right. you know uh, social security i think social security if you go to the website i think you might even see a pain you know thomas Paine reference there and this this is not consistent with defending individual rights so i don't know how he you know how he resolved that in his own mind but i just want to give you a moment to uh, comment on that yeah he because i know he, he advocated a a, a, a government sponsored uh the welfare state that is the min a minimum income right that the government should guarantee yes. the people yeah uh yeah in the form of social security like you said you know retirement uh benefits and and everything uh so, so yeah uh no this is inconsistent this doesn't work it's not logical because yeah. you know most illogical, you know, uh, Mr. Payne, <laughs> you know, like here, Mr. Scott somebody has to pay. In other words, if you're de yeah, exactly. defending somebody's liberty, who's going to pay for this stuff? And is that a violation of right. their individual rights by forcing them to pay? Theoretically, yeah. Social Security, you know, they give you that Ponzi scheme that, oh, you'll give in when you're, you know, when you're young so that you get it when you're old. No, that's that's just a violation. That's, of not, rights. How, so, that's yeah. not how it works. You could say out. pain is no. not. Yeah, it's yeah, absolutely it inconsistent. Out. Because yeah. individual rights means you know, means fundamentally the to be free of the initiation of force against you. That's what it means to have a right to your own life. Yes, that you, that, that you're protected yes. against anybody initiating force against you, whether it's private criminals or above all the government. But to finance this universal, you know, minimum, you know, minimum income uh, that Payne wants, the government's going to have to initiate force against uh, against productive people. So, you know, unless Payne makes it very clear that this has to be done voluntarily, uh, but then that's but then that's not government. You know, that's private. That's right. private charity. Government is an institution of force, right. and, and he, you know, he talked. No, Payne was clear that his government, the government, has to guarantee this this minimal this minimal income, which means theft on a grand scale. It means you know, it means robbing productive people to pay for people who, are, uh, for whatever reason, you know, are, are not able to take care of themselves. It's a terrible violation of the principle of individual rights. What Payne should have said is consistent with his beliefs: is we we, we respect the rights of individuals to to live their own lives. And we're confident that free men and women will be uh, men and women of goodwill, that they'll voluntarily help, you know, innocent people, not criminals who are, you know, dishonest people who are in need, but innocent people who are in need. And that would be that would be consistent and it would be accurate. You know, uh, free men and yeah. women are generous. They do. They 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 are very. Generous. Look at the charity that's always existed in the in the United States, you know. A lot of money goes into goes into charity from from free countries. That's what that's what Payne should have said. Yeah, I I totally agree, Andy. So he dies in Greenwich Village, and he's his plan was to be buried by uh, at a Quaker cemetery because that was his religion. But the Quakers were like, "This man is too radical." Okay, yes. we, we, as you said, only six people show up at his funeral. There's there's just as he, he's not he's not the peak of his popularity. And uh, so he's buried on the new in the New Rochelle location. And uh, a couple of years later, this British guy comes over from Britain, midnight, steals, digs up the bones, <laughs> and is chased basically by the cops uh, out of uh, America, and then goes to the UK with the body, the, the remains of uh, pain. And he wants to have this big celebration for the man's life. He's like, this guy's not appreciated in, in the UK. He really should be. Well, the whole project falls, you know, falls apart. And it ends up, he's selling bones to fund different things. He's selling bones and brains and all these different parts. And, and now this, this uh, Thomas Paine, it's like one of their projects, the Paine uh, Society up in New Rochelle. They're like, anyone who has a bone of his, oh. just shoot us an email. <laughs> It's so crazy. <laughs> it's so, so sad. Man, I mean, he doesn't have so a peaceful sad. life during his lifetime or during his death. You know, nobody like that in history has gone through what Thomas Paine has gone through. 
And that's one reason. And, you know, he, he went through all of this hellishness and yet is one of the, the one of the greatest champions of yes. whatever his flaws, one of the greatest yes. champions of individual rights and human liberty in all of history. And he did it under tremendous adversity which uh, he was he was a winter soldier as well as uh, you know he, he not only fighting in, in the summer and the sunshine but he was a winter soldier as well in the in the greatest yeah, he's captain cause. america mm -hmm. he's captain america there you go there you go uh he's captain america you know in, in the greatest cause uh, of all and that is the cause of human yes. liberty and we salute you uh tom is paying for you, your thomas courage Payne. and your greatness uh and everybody out there in hero land i hope you've been inspired by this extraordinary man uh, you know and his and his accomplishments against tremendous odds and opposition mm -hmm. from every from every quarter in america in britain in france everywhere he went even after his death like you said selling off his bones is just is just is just a crazy you know uh, uh you know a detail from, from his life but it's fitting no peace yeah. when, when yes. you're when you're a crusader when you're a crusader for liberty you fight and you're going to fight a yes. lot and you have to accept mm -hmm. that you're going to have to fight a yep. lot and that's how thomas Paine inspires us you know to be uh fighters fighters for human liberty in our own day well during, this during was, these uh, times that try men's souls andy we look to heroes like pain uh first in our own lives and then for others around us i agree yep people who are not mm -hmm. merely summer soldiers and sunshine patriots and who recognize that their own mind is their own church and will use it to stand up yeah. for the cause of independence. So we salute you, Thomas mm -hmm. Paine, and everybody out there in Hero Land. We will be back once again next week on The Hero Show. We'll see you then.